Hello and welcome to Fight Picks with the Pros. My name is Gary and today we're going to review four fights from the upcoming UFC Fight Night featuring Robert Bobby Knuckles Whitaker versus Kelvin Gaslam in the main event. As always, today I am joined by Ultimate Fighter Season 18 champ Chris Holds It Down Holdsworth. What's up? What's up? Stick around to the end of the show to see our fight picks for the main event. Let's go. Introducing Fight Picks with the Pros. Brought to you by FanDuel. All right. So the first fight we got Luis Violet Bob Ross. Violet Bob Ross. Pena coming in as a minus 144 favorite against Alex Munoz coming in as a plus 118 underdog. So this was originally booked in February, but Munoz pulled out with an injury. Uh, we're both extremely familiar with him. Of course, he fights out of here at Team Alpha Male. But before we get to him, let's talk a little bit about Luis Pena. Uh, Chris, tell me what you know about Luis and what you think about his game. Man, Luis is, is, is very long and, and lanky for his weight class. Uh, he's unorthodox. He comes out as a southpaw. Um, and he, he's just wired. He does weird stuff on the ground. You know, I, I helped Alex get ready for this. So, uh, you know, I, I got to study Luis mm. a bit. And um, he's he's got some weird chokes from the bottom, like, you know, in, in bad positions. Like, he'll throw his legs up and, and throw you in weird chokes. He's He's got, like, some good rubber guard and locks on Kimura some weird angles and, and uses those. So, uh, you know, he, he's well-rounded. He'll, yeah. he'll throw knees down the middle. He'll, he'll throw every type of strike. And uh, I know he used to be at AKA, but it seems like he's at American uh, top, team. top team now. So... Uh, seems like a lot of guys are there, so they they're they're doing something right. They're doing yeah. something right. Yeah, he's a southpaw fighter. He he is lanky, like you said. I watched some of his highlights this morning, and yeah, he does have that unorthodox feel to him. Hard to get down his timing is, is yeah. what yeah. what it feels like. Some fighters have it where they stand and walk around, and he he's got this different movement. So it's interesting. So on the other side, we got Alex Munoz that we we both know trains out of here at Team Alpha Male. Six and one. He had his first fight in the UFC where he had a decision loss and he fought his butt off during that fight. I remember watching it. He came from Dana White's contender series. He came in the UFC as a six and zero prospect. You know, he he's ready to go. His fights coming up. I see him in the gym. He's working hard. So Chris, on your side from behind the scenes, not to give too much information, but how is Alex looking? He's looking really good. He's been like you said, he's been working his butt off. I've been seeing him in every practice. He's doing the extra, you know, he's doing the extra stuff outside of practice, working, you know, working on skills, working on his conditioning, uh, you know, like we, we've done some some private training together, uh, you know, working on some stuff that nice. I, I think, you know, will help him for the fight. So I, I think he learned a lot from this last fight. That was his first fight that someone really brought it to him and he wasn't able yeah. to like take them down and, and hold them down. Um, and you learn a lot from those, especially at that level. And I think... Um, you know, learning a lot. You know, he made some adjustments, and he, he's going to be a different fighter this this time. Yeah, I agree. He's had kind of a crazy road the past couple months. One thing that happened, I know you just brought this up on Uriah Favors podcast, but I was talking to him about this. I was going to bring him on the show, and it's so funny. He posted on his Instagram channel. He had two homeless guys steal his car, and and it had all his UFC gear inside the car. So he ended up running around, see, finding his car. He was chasing him down at one point. When he finally came up to him, the two guys were running away from him, and they they had his UFC gear on. Why they were running away from him? Yeah, his, his snow his snow pants and stuff too. And like, his snow pants. Yeah, yeah they, they had all his stuff on. Gosh. So he finds these guys has all his stuff on. Imagine a UFC fighters running you down to stop you. He said he was on the phone with the police. They kept on telling him to stop chasing him, but of course. He's like, I see him with my yeah, car and my yeah, stuff. Yeah. He's not going to stop. So you guys want to get the, the full story, head over to Uriah Faber's podcast. You'll be able to hear the whole story from Alex himself. But let's get back to it. So the, for the official fight pick, Chris, how do you see this fight? It's going to be a three-round fight. How do you see it playing out? I can see Alex uh, getting a TKO. Uh, I, I think he can he can rock him standing and, and, and finish him on the ground. Or um, I think he, he'll win a decision. You know he'll be able to win these yeah. win these scrambles, end up on top, and uh, he's hard to move when he's when he's on top of you. And okay. I know what type of game Luis. You know he's kind of got that guard game. He's he's willing to play off his back. You know he's hard to hold down, and he throws a lot of stuff from his back. But I think Alex Alex can keep him down. Okay, yeah, I'm also going to go Alex Munoz. I think he's looking ripped as always. He doesn't want to lose another fight in, in the UFC. This will be a second fight, and I think this is really going to set him up for success. I think it has what it takes to get this win. So I'm going Alex Munoz by decision. 
All right, next fight we have up is Jeremy, little heathen, Stevens, coming in as a minus 132 favorite against Dracker Close, coming in as a plus 108 underdog. So this is an inter interesting matchup. They're both coming off KO losses. This will be Jeremy Stevens' first fight at lightweight. So he's moving down from 155 to 145. I mean, featherweight. I mean, lightweight. He's moving up. He's moving up yeah, yeah. from featherweight to lightweight. So he's moving from 145 to 155, which I think will be good for him. It's a kind of an interesting story. You know, he's 28 and 18. He has the record for most losses in the UFC. He's just been around a, a long, long time. But he's 0-4, 0-4-1 and 4 and 1 in his last five fights. So it's been a rough road for him. So starting with Jeremy Stevens, what do you think about his his overall game and kind of his his journey to where he is now? Man, the little heathen, is, he's been around for years. Uh, uh, I remember when he was fighting, like, I forget some of those older fights, but he's been around for so long. I, I have a ton of respect for guys who not only have, you know, over 40 fights but you know he's been in the ufc that that long and yeah 34 you know, fights. all his losses are, are at our top top notch opponents yeah. that's the thing when, when you're fighting at the the highest level of the ufc or you know wherever you're fighting if you're fighting at the highest level you know there, there's a good chance you're going to be losing because you're fighting the best competition there is you know there's only a few that can do it that can go undefeated that can become champ and you know just go out on, on yeah. top you know habib you know usman you know it, it's but you know, some guys are, are just like to fight. They're they're good, and they you know they can knock you out, they can finish you, but they also, um, you know, will put up a good fight. And as you can see, that they, they they lose fights too. So he's entertaining. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, he, he's entertaining, and you know, hopefully, uh, you know, he made some changes, and you know, he's hungry, and th this should be a good fight for him. No, I agree. It is a good fight for him. On the other side, we, we got Dracker close, and I hope I'm saying that first name right, Dracker. But uh, he's 11 and 2, four TKOs, seven subs. He was on a three fight win streak until his last loss against Darush, who it was a pretty wild KO. It was almost like a walk off KO. I watched that fight. It was an epic fight until that point. He was going toe to toe with him, who, you know, Darush is now fighting Tony Ferguson, who's going to be an epic matchup. And he is an, an excellent fighter. So he's, he's, He's really on a good path where they're meeting. I, I want to lead towards Jeremy Stevens on this because I'm a fan of his. But yeah. I, I feel like uh, Close should probably be the the favorite in this fight. He's coming in as an underdog at this point. Um, what do you think about Close? Do you think he has a he's coming into this? Obviously, the analysts are saying initially that he is the favorite coming in this fight, and it looks like the money's going there as well. So, what do you think about Close? What would his game plan be coming in this fight to beat Jeremy Stevens, who's coming up to 155 and should have a little extra power there, right? Yeah. Um... I, th I think Jeremy's gonna do good at that weight. Yeah. You know, he had to cut a lot of weight to to make 145, and you know, who knows? Maybe that affected his performances. And you know, him moving up, he's gonna have more power. He's probably gonna have more conditioning. Uh, he's probably gonna be able to take a shot better. And uh, this Jack Har guy, I think, <laughs> uh, you know, I think he's, I think he's gonna get KO'd by Jeremy. Yeah. I, I think that that that's my call. Uh, I think Jeremy is gonna KO Jack Har with a big hook. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good call. I'm gonna go also, uh, and I gotta go against you at least one of these fights. But I'm gonna go Jeremy Stevens by TKO. I think it's gonna be early in the fight. He's gonna have a ton of energies. He, he really wants to get back on that winning streak. And close on the other side, he wants to get a win and move down to featherweight, down to 145. He thinks he can make a title run there. Close was imp he's a really impressive striker. I gotta tell you, the way he stood with Darush was really impressive. But I'm also a fan of Jeremy Stevens, so I'm going to go Jeremy Stevens by TKO as well. All right, moving on to the next fight. We got Ricardo Ramos coming in as a minus 132 favorite versus Bill Senor Perfecto. <laughs> Algio coming in as a plus 108 underdog. So this is an interesting fight. Um, we, we were very familiar with Ricardo Ramos, or at least you are, Chris. I look forward to getting your feedback. He's 14 and three, three TKOs, seven subs. He's an Orthodox fighter. He looks like he's in good shape. He also trains out of here at team alpha male. He's been looking good around the gym. He's been in a, spending a lot of time lately. And obviously it makes sense. He's, he's training, he's in camp for his upcoming fight. So first, before we get into Bill Algio, let's talk about Ricardo Ramos since he's a familiar guy to us. What do you think about his game, Chris? Yeah, Ricardo is a, you know, he, he's a threat to anybody. He's got the jiu-jitsu and he, he's got the striking. You know, he mixes it up really well, and you know, I think featherweight is a better weight class for him. You know, he was cutting a lot of weight to, to make bantamweight, 
And you know, featherweight looks like he you know he doesn't have to cut as much. He's he's keeping uh you know, he's keeping healthy and uh, he's been looking good in the gym. I see him working a lot with his uh, his his Muay Thai uh, mitt pad holder Gil- Gilmi, uh, nice. which he's a great uh, Muay Thai guy, and he was cracking pads the other day. And you know he he's a good person too. So I really like Ricardo. Uh, I'm excited to see that he got this fight because I know he had another fight that got like canceled yeah. last minute or something. So um, I'm, I'm glad to see he got this fight for sure. Yeah, on the other side we got Bill Algio. So. He was a ring of combat featherweight champion. He has great takedown, to, uh, great takedown defense. He's a submission artist in his fights. He went on a little bit of a losing streak when he first came in the UFC. Now he won his last fight, and he looks good. And he speaks very confidently. I watched one of his interviews. You know, he wants to. He doesn't want to just hang around the UFC. He wants to work up to fighting ranked opponents and, and getting that top ten. And mm-hmm. and really, he doesn't want to be a guy that takes fights, as he was trying to explain. He wants to be a guy that's you know climbing the. The rankings, excuse me. So we'll see how that turns out. Of course, I know I'm pulling for Ricardo Ramos. I want to bring him on the show sometime. I, it'd be great to see him get a good win. He's five and two in the UFC. This would really push his trajectory, trajectory to ha- having more success and, and pushing more of those call outs. So when it comes down to it, I'll go for an early call on this one. For my official fight pick for this fight, I am going to go Ricardo Ramos. You want to take a shot at that nickname? Uh. <laughs> Ricardo, which one? Yeah, Car. Uh, where does it say? Oh, Carcassina? <laughs> there you go. Car- Carcassina. Uh, oh, Carcassina. Ricardo, <laughs> Carcassina Ramos. <laughs> so he's coming in as a favorite. I'm going to go Ricardo Ramos by decision victory, and that'll be my official fight pick for this one. Chris, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think that's a that's a pretty good call. It looks like Bill's takedown defense is pretty good, uh, 62%. So, you know, he's defending more than half of the, the takedowns. Yeah. Uh but you know Ricardo does a good job of, of mixing up his takedowns, so I think he can he can get some takedowns. He'll he'll win a decision on this one. Cool. So we both saying decision yeah. for Ricardo, Carcassina, Ramos. <laughs> it's time for the main fight pick of the evening. All right. So for the main event this time, we've got Robert Bobby Knuckles. Is that a new nickname? <laughs> Wait it's gotta be. That's the first time I heard it. <laughs> Coming in as a minus two sixty five favorite versus Kelvin Gaslam as a plus two ten underdog. So we all know uh, Gaslam replaced Paula Costa, who was supposed to fight uh, versus Robert Whitaker. So that was the swap out there. Whitaker had to drop out hours before with the hernia when he was supposed to fight Kelvin Gaslam in the past. So this is a matchup that was supposed to happen before, and then Robert Whitaker ended up losing his losing the interim title belt to Izzy at that time. So great matchup. First, we got Robert Whitaker. We'll break him down first. 22 and 5, 9 TKOs, 5 subs, two straight wins after losing to Izzy. Um, his only loss in the last seven years has been to Izzy Adesanya. Pretty amazing stat. That's crazy. And he's a heck of a fighter. Yeah, I, I I will admit that I've picked up against him quite a few times. And it's uh you know, I had Cannoneer in that last fight even, and it's really frustrating because he's just so solid. Uh, fundamentally and he stays very compact he's hard to hit and he has vicious hooks and counters and and his wrestling's always there when he needs it but he likes to stand and bang it out yeah. too so what are your initial thoughts and breakdown on on robert whitaker as, as a fighter he's a former champ for a reason like yeah. his only loss is to izzy who you know who's the best in the weight class and who's who, who's had a lot of great fights and um, he's 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 really well rounded. He can finish you on the feet. He he's got good clinch work, good ground and pound, good good submission stuff. So, but Calvin, Calvin's gonna be a test. You know what kind of notice Calvin had for this fight? Like, I think he had had a good amount of notice. I okay. want to say it's been about three weeks now. Okay, so decent. Well, still, you know, I'm sure Calvin uh, it was in shape, getting ready for something else, and. Um, but I'm I'm still like I, I I'm always gonna lean towards the guys who've had full camps. Yeah. Just because I feel like they're going to be in a little bit better shape, and when it comes down to it, at that level, five rounds, it's usually whoever is in better shape, whoever can last longer. Um, and, and some guys can and do really good the first two rounds, and then they just they fade out the it. last three. Then some yeah. guys know how to, you know, keep a good consistent pace the whole five, and 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 use that to their advantage. So. Uh, I'm a huge Calvin fan. Uh, I'm also a huge Robert fan. I think if Calvin is going to win this fight, he's going to use those hooks to get in close, make it a clinch, a yeah. clinch battle, trying to get Robert against the cage and, and, and get some takedowns. Use his weight, use his grappling uh, to you know slow slow Robert down a little bit. 
but like I said, I, I'm going to go with Robert Whitaker by decision just because mm-hmm. I think he's going to be in better shape and knowing Calvin, he's probably been, you know, eating a lot. And like, yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> Let's hope he, you know, he's had those problems nah, in the I past. Is, uh, yeah. yeah. Let's see. I, we think he's passed it this time. <laughs> you know, he's coming off a win. Hopefully he's feeling good. You can never count out that left straight that that Kelvin has. No, I'm not counting him out by any. any no, you know, I'm just like going with uh, you know my heart or my brain here. So, you know, I think no, no, I get it, I get it. He can win. Don't get me wrong. Like yeah. Calvin can win, but I just think Robert with a little bit extra time getting ready for a main event, he might be in a little better shape. No, I think that's a solid pick at Whitaker by decision, and you know we have Whitaker by TK or KO is a uh, plus two fifty bet right now so that could be that could be a good, good prop to take on the other side uh kelvin to win by ko is plus 550 bet 100 dollars take home 550 so oh. that that's an interesting one as well so you might there might be some guys out there thinking hey maybe kelvin has that power he can put whitaker away it's easier said than done it's just so hard to think about whitaker being put away because he's he's just such a game guy and he always comes in shape in it in the fifth round he's he's his motor's going the yeah. same as the first We've seen other guys gas and and yeah, gas tank has been a problem for Kelvin and weight issues, etc. So this is a interesting fight. I got to go against you on this one just because I can't. We can't play the same side. All this I got to talk some crap next week and have a different <laughs> side. So reluctantly, I'm going to go Kelvin Gassum on this one. Let's say something crazy. He's able to pull out that that TKO or KO finish. I think maybe finds a way to get him to the ground. Start landing those heavy left hands. Ref Herb Dean pulls them off, and Kelvin gets the TKO win. That's going to be my official fight pick for the main event. So you're going Whitaker by decision. I'm going Kelvin by TKO. Thank you guys for watching Fight Picks with the Pros. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel for more upcoming fight pick videos. We'll see you next time. Hello, everyone. Bruce Buffer here. Thank you for watching the MMA Surge YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and get notified when we upload next.